I address you, the leader of the Islamic Republic of Iran, Ali Khamenei. We have reached the end of days. We have reached the moment of truth. We have reached the day of judgment. We are compelled to speak openly, to confront the root causes, and to reveal our true identity. Who are we at our core? What do we truly stand for? Why is our destruction so vital to you? And most importantly, who will emerge victorious in this struggle? The story of Israel and Iran is not merely a product of the modern era. Our shared history stretches back over 2,500 years. Every year, we Jews celebrate the festival of Purim, the festival of Mordechai and the Stel, from Shushan, your ancient capital. You know this history very well. Over the years, you have preserved it along with the tombs of Mordechai and Esther. The story of Purim begins with a description of King Achashverosh's reign. In the days of Achashverosh, the same Achashverosh who ruled from India to Kush over 127 provinces. Achashverosh, your king, inherited the Babylonian Empire, ruling over 127 provinces, including the land of your neighbors in Iraq. You ruled over much of the ancient world. But why, you might ask? Why did God grant you with such a power? The prophet Isaiah provides the answer. Thus says the Lord to his anointed to Koresh, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and to loose the armor of kings. Isaiah, speaking on behalf of God, reveals that all Koresh's victories and conquests are divinely ordained. The ultimate purpose of these achievements is to declare to Jerusalem, you shall be rebuilt, and to the temple, your foundation shall be laid. Koresh was chosen by the King of Kings, the creator of the universe, to inherit the Babylonian Empire, to restore the Jews to the land of Israel, and to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem, the very temple that the Babylonians had destroyed. Indeed, Koresh, the King of Persia, fulfills his destiny through the renowned Koresh declaration proclaiming, Thus says Koresh, King of Persia, the Lord, God of heaven, has given me all kingdoms of the earth, and he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Koresh recognized that his authority came from God, which led him to direct the Jewish people to return to the land of Israel and to rebuild the temple. Thus, we encounter our first remarkable revelation, the Iranian imperial identity, of which you are so proud today, is fundamentally rooted in the fulfillment of Koresh's promise to return the children of Israel to their land and to rebuild their temple. Without the Jews in their temple, there would have been no Persian Empire to begin with. This is our first revelation. Now, let's proceed to the second. Your identity is shaped not only by nationalism, but also by religion. From the late 14th century onward, you embraced Shia Islam. Now, it's time to uncover the truth. Khamenei, as a religious and political leader, a wise man, and a direct descendant of Muhammad, you are aware of the truth. The truth is, Khamenei, that the foundational principles of Islam are derived from Judaism. Belief in one God, reward and punishment, salvation, the end of times and the afterlife, all of these originate from Judaism. Christianity and Islam, in essence, are the rebellious offshoots of Judaism aiming to replace it. Thus, we have our second revelation. 
not only does your national identity stem from us, the roots of your religion are also deeply grounded in ours. Now let's move on to Revelation number 3. The modern era, as promised by God in our Bible and repeated by our prophets, after 2,000 years of exile, we returned to our land and established a nation. In the 80s and 90s, one of our most formidable enemies was Saddam Hussein, the ruler of Iraq. In 1981, the Israel Defense Forces destroyed his nuclear reactor. At that time, you were caught up in a bloody war with Iraq, with hundreds of thousands killed and millions wounded. In a desperate bid, you even sent children to the battlefield. Khamenei, have you ever considered what would have happened if Israel had not taken action against the Iraqi reactor in 1981? Which cities would have been devastated by a nuclear attack? Our cities or yours? Would Saddam have dared to strike a nuclear-armed Israel? Or would he have chosen to target Iran? Let's face it, Khamenei. Our destruction of the Iraqi reactor saved you from nuclear annihilation. Thus, in this historical assessment, we uncovered three key revelations. One, your imperial national identity came to existence to fulfill a promise to us. Two, your religious identity is deeply rooted in our faith. And three, your very existence today owes much to our decisive action against Iraq. And despite all this, Khamenei, you have chosen to seek our destruction? What drives you to this? What compels you to invest so much effort into erasing the very nation to which you owe your physical, national, and religious existence? The answer lies in the fundamental difference between the Jewish vision and the Islamic vision. You want to realize Shia Islamic salvation in Muhammad's way. That is, to impose your belief on the whole world by force. You believe that God must be imposed on man. Humanity has no choice. Everything is from Allah, and Muhammad's religion is by the sword. You arrest women who do not cover their faces. You torture your fellow citizens and make them disappear without a trial. And these are just two examples. In the name of the Islamic Revolution, and as a counterweight to the Shah's secular state, you have turned Iran into a religious hell. And you want to export this hell to the Middle East and to the whole world. You took the principles of faith in God, and turn them into murder and rape, slavery and terror, physical and mental bondage. You brought a curse to the world. All means in your hands have been authorized to forcibly subjugate man to God. This is your way, while we believe in a completely opposite way. We believe in salvation of real freedom and through man's choice of God, to bring blessing to the world. I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life. We believe that the secret of salvation is choice, the choice of a free man, without coercion, without bondage, and without terror. Only when a free man can choose his God, wishing to connect to the source of life, to the source of goodness, and blessing. Only then will humanity reach its complete salvation. Khamenei, understand this. We are a nation born from the exodus from Egypt, carrying a revolutionary message of freedom that challenges tyranny and oppression. Every Passover, we drink four cups of wine to celebrate our freedom. After 2,000 years, we return to our land to declare a salvation to the whole world. A salvation that believes in man and in free choice of God. 
because God created man in his image. Every human is a king because in every human there is the image of God, the image of God that you have lost. The truth must be told. We are not in a struggle for a dominance over the Middle East. We are in a confrontation of identity. There is an ideological rivalry between us, and that is why Israel is a thorn in your eye. Our vision of freedom is opposite to your vision of tyranny. If we are right and you are wrong, then your vision has no place in the world. And that is why you are eager to destroy us. Supreme Leader of the Islamic Republic of Iran, Ali Khamenei, this is the moment of truth. This is the day of judgment. I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse, and you, Khamenei, chose death. You chose to play the devil and lost your humanity. You chose to continue Haman and forgot Koresh. You chose pagan jihad and abandoned the God of Abraham. You chose to arm Hezbollah. You chose to train the monsters of Hamas. You chose to create militias in Syria and Iraq. You chose to develop nuclear weapons. You, Khamenei, imagine that you are on the royal path to the coming of the Mahdi, and you do not understand that you are on the dark way to hell. When you challenge God's chosen people, you choose curse, you choose defeat, you choose humiliation. As with Haman the Amalekite in Purim, your plan of destruction will boomerang back onto you. History repeats itself. He who rises to destroy us will himself be destroyed. He who rises to cut off the world's salvation will be cursed forever. In the name of the God of Israel, we will fight for truth, justice, and freedom. We will destroy you on all fronts. And he who answered Mordechai and Esther in Shushan the capital will answer us. In this war, we will achieve a historic victory. Checkmate! The victory of good over evil. The victory of life over death. The victory of blessing over curse. When we prevail, we will fulfill the true vision of our prophets. Just as in the time of Korish, we will rebuild the holy temple in our capital, Jerusalem. We will light the menorah and proclaim the message of freedom, life, and peace to the entire world. Shema Israel. <laughs> Ah, my dear,